Hey there, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here. I want to say hello to my Facebook audience. And hopefully my Periscope audience will come up here soon. There we go. Hello, Periscope audience. All right. Uh, so as always, I pray before I come out here and I ask the Lord, what is it that he wants me to share with the body of Christ? Because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. Uh, and I'm going to get to that. But I also want to let you know how to support me. A couple people have asked me. They said they wanted to give me some support, and I really appreciate that. Well, there's two ways you can support me. The first way you can support me is you can make a donation to my not-for-profit ministry, and I'll put a link as soon as I'm done with the video, uh, a PayPal. Hey there, how are you? I'm going to put a PayPal link. I'll put a PayPal link on my Twitter account. So I don't know if I can put it on Periscope, uh, but I know I can put a PayPal link on my Twitter account, and I'm going to put it on my Facebook Live as well, because a couple of people have asked me. So if you make a donation to my uh, Prophet David Taylor, that's a not-for-profit organization, so those donations are definitely tax-deductible. You can support me that way. You can always so also support me by buying my music. I've got a music ministry that I do as well, so I'll put some links up there too. So uh, I really appreciate appreciate you supporting my ministry, and uh, you know I'm I'm grateful to be used of God. So anyway, you want to bless me through the PayPal link or uh, with the music, I am uh, very grateful, very grateful. So let's get into today's lesson. Today's lesson is about a familiar verse, but you may not have heard what I'm going to tell you today about it. And then I do have a word from the Lord about it, too. So let's do a quick word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We ask you to be in, in our midst, Lord. I invite you in, God. I invoke your presence and, and the power of your Holy Spirit and your word of wisdom and your word of knowledge and your understanding, oh God. Flow through me and let me communicate to your people that which you have given me to say with effectiveness and clarity that you might be glorified and that the saints might be edified. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is Isaiah 10 and 27, but I'm going to tell you some things that you may have never heard about it before, and we're also going to talk about fatness, okay, so I'll explain that in a minute. So here we go. Isaiah 10 and 27, we're going to read it from the King James Bible, because that's probably the version you're most familiar with. Isaiah 10 and 27 says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Holy cow. How many times in my life have I heard people use the phrase, the anointing destroys the yoke? Well, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Well, the anointing destroys the yoke. Well, the yoke is destroyed by the anointing. How many times have you heard that in your life? They even have songs about it, about how the anointing destroys the yoke. Okay, but this is why you have to learn how to study the Bible. And this is why you have to learn proper principles of Bible study. Okay, one of the principles of Bible study is you have to get behind whatever language you're reading it in and read it in the original languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. You don't have to be a master of those languages. You don't have to get a degree in those languages, but you do need to do some research because the translations into English say one thing, but you got to look at the original wording or phrasing, okay? So one more time, Isaiah 10, 27, in the King James Bible says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That's the famous churchy phrase that people use that the anointing destroys the yoke. Let's read that out of the New American Standard. The New American Standard Bible says, So it will be in that day that his burden will be removed from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be broken because of fatness. English Standard Version, And in that day his burden will depart from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be broken because of the fat. Berean Study Bible, on that day the burden will be lifted from your shoulders and the yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because of your fatness. Uh, New International Version, 
In that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulders, their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. All right, so that tells me we need to understand the context a little bit better about what's going on here. What's going on in Isaiah chapter 10, you need to read the whole chapter, is God is talking to the children of Israel about the oppression they have been receiving from the Assyrians. And the reason that the Assyrians have been attacking Israel is because God is judging them. God is whipping them. God is chastising them. So, you know, old school, you know, I guess they don't do it now, but you know, old school, how mama would get a switch and whip them thighs and whip that behind. That's what God was doing to the children of Israel. He was whipping them with the Assyrians by sending the Assyrians at them and they were looting and plundering and pillaging them and they had led them into some level of captivity. Okay? God was using the Assyrians to judge Israel because Israel had been unfaithful to God, because they had thrown down God's commandments, because they had turned their back on what the Lord told them to do, and because they were doing things that were not pleasing in the eyes of God and serving other gods and worshiping other things. So God let their enemies, the Assyrians, come at them and put them in bondage. Okay? As you read Isaiah chapter 10, God is saying, I am doing this in my wrath and my anger because of your idolatry and your disobedience to me. And then God says, but my wrath and my anger is not going to last forever. I'm going to, I'm going to expel my anger. I'm going to be, you know, I'm not going to be angry forever. My anger will come to an end. And then when my anger comes to an end, then I'm going to whip them. Then I'm going to turn on the Assyrians and I'm going to get them back off of you. And what God is saying here is that in the day when I do that, even though you have been burdened by them, I'm going to make you so rich and plump and full again until whatever yoke they had on your neck shall be broken off because you'll be so enlarged. Now, a yoke is something that you put on cows or oxes, sometimes buffalo, but definitely cows and oxen. Because when you're using cows and oxes to plow a field, you put that metal or that wooden uh, collar and it has a vertical uh, plank to it where you can link up three or four oxes in a row. And then as you plow your field, as they pull the plow or they pull the cart, that's called being yoked together. That's a cow or an oxen that's yoked in that contraption. That's what a yoke is. And so God is using that analogy, he's using that metaphor to say that you've been oppressed by the Assyrians because of your disobedience. And I sent them on you to whip you and chastise you because of your Israel, you have no business serving other gods. But then God says, uh, you're going to start in verse 20, that you're going to come back to me. You're going to do what you should be doing and truly depend on me and not depend on your false gods. Once that happens, once that happens, even though the Assyrians have been beating you, once you get back right with me, then my anger is going to end with you and turn towards them. Then I'm going to whip them back off you once you get right with me. And then he says, in that day, their burden, he's talking about the Assyrians, will be lifted from your shoulders. So in other words, God said you're going to break out like a cow or an ox breaking out of their harness, their yoke. And the yoke, uh, in that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulders, their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. So the King James Bible is the one that says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Let's look at what the actual word is in Hebrew. The word in Hebrew is shemen. Shemen, and this is Strong's Exhaustive uh, Concordance, entry number 8081, so you can look it up. So you understand, I'm not just making this stuff up, okay? Strong's Concordance 8081, the Hebrew word there is shemen. That word means oil, but it also means Choice, fatness, fertile, lavish, oils, ointment, 
olive, or wild. Okay? So in other words, what God is actually saying to them is that after you return to me and get right with me, and after my anger with you is over, I'm going to prosper you and make you fat. I'm going to enrich you. I'm going to fill you with oil. I'm going to make you fertile. I'm going to bless you until things are lavish again. And you're going to be so prosperous that your increase, your neck is going to get so fat, it's going to break the yoke of the Assyrians off of you. You're not going to be under their oppression anymore. You're going to break free. That's what that verse is actually saying. Okay, that's why it's so important that you learn how to study the Bible. And one of the principles of proper Bible, Bible study, again to repeat, is that you must get behind whatever language you're reading it in to the original languages it was written in, which are Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Okay, so that word there, that phrase we've been using all this time, that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing, well, the anointing destroys the yoke. Okay, that word there is actually better translated oil. Sometimes oil is translated anointing, but in this context, God is talking about the fatness and the increase of once the Israelites start serving him again properly, and when his anger is over with his children, then he's going to whip the Assyrians back off of them and prosper them so and break them out of bondage. That's what that means. Okay. So, again, we've been using that churchy phrase all this time about how, you know, the yoke is destroyed about the anointing, but you need to understand what it's actually saying, okay? Now, there are many words for anointing, to anoint, to be anointed. There are many words in the scripture that all are translated in English, anointing, but they're different words in Hebrew and Greek, okay? So many times that word is talking about oil, it's talking about a rubbing or a smearing of oil. It's talking about olive oil. It's talking about the fatness because olives have a lot of fat, but it's good fat. It's monounsaturated fat. <laughs> it's good fat. Um, so, so sometimes that's appropriate, but you have to get behind the language to understand what God is trying to say. Okay? So I needed to give you that background first so you understand what that verse is actually saying. Now I can get to the prophetic word. And the prophetic word that the Lord was showing me, the word was anointing in terms of fatness. And what God is saying to those that are moving into that is that he's about to enrich you and prosper you and fill your vessels with oil and make you lavish. And also, if there are any yokes on you, they're going to be broken because of your increase. Do you understand? Does that make sense? So let me give you some practical examples. Let me show you what that means in real life. It means that you're coming into a season where your career is going to begin to prosper and that you'll be taking in so much money, you'll either be able to quit your job, you'll be able to live off you know, this new career or your own creations, and you'll be able to get out of debt. That's what that means, because debt is a yoke. Debt is most definitely a yoke that holds us down. And if you don't have any money or all your money is tied up in debt, you're not free to do the things you want to do financially for yourself, for your family. And sometimes when you got health debt, when you got health issues or you have expensive you know, health bills, God is saying that the season is coming and is upon us, yea, now is, where he's going to begin to prosper us and make us so lavish in fact, you're going to be so enriched and filled with oil that you're going to begin to break yokes off your life. Another practical example of that is if you have unhealthy relationships. If you have unhealthy relationship, relationships, once you really start growing in God, you are naturally going to outgrow all the negative people. Uh, my pastor was preaching about that this morning. He was talking about all the haters on social media and how people... The ones that have the most criticism are always the ones that ain't about nothing. Always the ones that ain't doing nothing. All of the ones that want you to stay right where they met you. All of the ones that don't have anything going. And then my pastor said that if you are about something, if you are going for what God called you to do, you don't have time to worry about what other people are doing. And I give that a resounding amen because that's the truth. 
If you are going for what God has called you to do, it's going to take all you got. It's literally going to take all you got. In fact, God is going to give you so much that you're going to have to start some of it in your lifetime and your children and your grandchildren are going to have to pick it up. And if you don't have biological children, then you are going to have to create spiritual children. Okay, that's a mistake that a lot of people make. A lot of great artists, a lot of great people, they don't mentor anybody. They don't pour what they know into someone else so they can carry it forward after their death. That's what your biological children are for because they are genetically coming from you. So there will be a lot of you in them. But if you don't have biological children, you're supposed to create spiritual children where you mentor and pour yourself into someone and you make them spiritually your son and your daughter. Because God gives us so much. You'd be surprised at how much you already know in your life. God gives you so much in life. And if you go for it, and you're trying to develop it to its greatest potential, it's going to be more than, than you can live long enough to see it till its fullest thing. You're going to have to get the ball rolling in your lifetime and then pass the baton on to your kids when you transition into glory. You see that? So that's what this verse is talking about, and that's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to relay, that fatness, that greatness. Let me give you another practical example. So, so growing financially helps break you out of debt. Growing spiritually and emotionally helps break you out of bad relationships. Let me give you another example. Sickness. If you're chronically sick, man, that's a yoke. You can't do everything you want to do if you're a prisoner in your own body. And if your body's not working the way it needs to work, then you can't do all the things you want to do in life. And that ain't nothing but a yoke. Okay? What God is saying is, is that not only is God going to give you healing in your body? But if you listen to what he's telling you about health principles, about healthy eating, about changing your diet, about exercise, you can come out of that chronic illness. You see that? And this is why this is a good segue for me to talk about what I teach on second Thursday night. I teach a series called NMG No More Genies, where I teach you how to get out of genie concept because too often in church and church is, when you hear ministers talk about what God's going to do, they give the impression that it's all up to God and you don't have to do nothing. <laughs> that you just have to stand there and receive it and it's going to be this magic thing. That's not true. So I talk about that on second Thursday nights. And I'm going to talk about that. Uh, part three of my series is coming up this Thursday. I'll get to that in a minute. But the reason I'm bringing that up now is because I want you to understand that just because God is giving you this fatness and this oil and this increase, you still have to do your part. So let me give you the practical examples. I don't care if God dropped a million dollars in your lap right now today. I mean, as I'm talking, you hear the doorbell ring and somebody hand you a check for a million dollars. If you don't know what to do with money, you're going to be broke again in six months. Okay, you've got to do your part. You've got to study money. You've got to learn about money. You've got to learn how to manage it, how to increase it, how to save it, how to invest it, how to plan for the future. You've got to do your part. That's why I teach so hard on no more genies. Because even if God does give you financial prosperity, if you don't know how to get out of debt and what to do and how to stay out of debt, then you're going to go back. Okay? That's your part of the equation when God gives the increase. Uh, practical example number two, relationships. You've got to learn how to tell people no. My pastor this morning was talking about how he's been delivered from people. That was powerful. He said he was free. Again, I give a resounding amen. That's 100% right. You've got to get free from people. You've got to get free from what you know they said. Well, you know, mom and them did it this way, so I don't know about all that. Well, they going to talk about me. Well, they ain't gonna, you got to get free from that. Because if you listen to that, you're going to listen to people, they're going to hold you down. They're going to drag you back. Okay? You're not going to be able to get up to where you want to get to. And for some people, getting up to where you need to be is where your spouse is. A lot of people have been praying to God for years, oh, I want to get married, or I want to get married. But you don't understand, you're at a level three, and your spouse is at a level seven. God has been trying to pull you up for years to get you to help make up from the extra four points. And once you get on the level where you're supposed to be, then you'll see the person you're supposed to marry. A lot of people don't get that. You got to come up from where you are in a lot of cases. Sometimes you got to come out from where you are. Sometimes you have to move to another city. 
Some people, God has been telling y'all, been telling you for years to move and you won't move. And you don't understand the city that the Lord is trying to move you to. Your husband or your wife is in that city. And they're not going to wait forever either. Mm -hmm. I just talked to a friend of mine who said they was getting married and they're moving. Because their, their spouse is in another city. So I'm going to miss them, but they got to follow their destiny. You know why? Because they got up to a level where they could see it. They could receive a spouse. Because they told me they, were, they had this one attitude. And God got them out of that attitude and got them to a new level. And now they're ready to get married. They came up and then they got their spouse. Okay? So when God gives you increase, you're going to have to get deliverance from people. Okay? You're going to have to do stuff that everybody's not going to like or agree with. They're going to call you names, whatever. Guaranteed is going to be the people that ain't about nothing they sell. Because when you are about what God has called you to do, you don't have time to worry about what other folks are doing. Because it's going to take all you got. It's literally going to take all the years of your life. And everything you're doing, some of that is just going to be starting. So your kids can take the baton and run with it after you go. Number two. Practical example number three, and this one is intense. I found out that some people like being sick. You know why some people like being sick? They like being sick because, number one, they don't have to take any responsibility for their lives. Like, oh, child, you know I got a condition. Okay, so they don't have to take responsibility for their life. Some people like being sick because they like sympathy and attention. So they get people to feel sorry for them and pay them more attention. Because they're sick all the time. Okay? Some people like being sick because they're lazy and don't want to work. I know somebody like that right now. I'm not going to call their name. They say, well, well, you know, David, I'm on disability, you know, and they give me a check. Ain't nothing wrong with being on disability if you are. Don't be offended by what I said. If you are actually disabled and all this, I'm not talking about you. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about if you can work and you just don't want to. So you find a way to try to, you know, scam the system or get a note from your doctor, you do something to try to make it look like you're not capable of working. You steady going on vacations. You steady getting on Facebook, posting videos of you traveling all these places, all this stuff you're doing, talking about you can't work. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those of you who, who legit. So please don't be offended by that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about people who are not legitimately disabled, but they keep claiming that they are. So I found out that for the reasons I named and others, there's a whole lot of people that, that want to be sick or act like they're sick or stay sick. I stopped by to tell you that when you start losing weight and you start, see, because once you get into wellness, you're not going to want to be sick no more. <laughs> once you start feeling better about your physical self and once you get more energy in your body and once your mind gets clear and once you start walking in the spirit of wellness, there's no way you will ever want to go back to being sick. Or, or caring too much weight or whatever you're struggling with. Because you know, mm -mm. being healthy, it just feels too good. It, it's, just, it's just a better life. And you have more options open to you the healthier that you are. But some of the people around you aren't going to like it when that happens. And you're going to have to get delivered from that. You're going to have to let that go and embrace the health that God is calling you to. And all the people that want to stay on a level of chronic illness. And I'm not talking about legit stuff. I'm talk, talking about people that don't want to get better. People that don't want to get better, you're going to have to let that go. It's going to be those people that get mad at you the most. Okay? And one more thought is going to come into me, then I'm going to wrap up. Let me tell you, uh, another group of haters is going to come at you. It's going to be people that miss their turn. It's going to be people that miss their turn. Some people miss their turn in life. So like, like uh, let me give you a practical example. If you want to be an Olympic level gymnast, you have to start when you're just a baby. When you're just learning how to walk, you got to start learning your gymnastics training. Because being an Olympic level gymnast takes many, many years. It's very, very expensive. But here's the key. You got to be young enough. You got to be young enough. You know, some of those girls break through at what? Uh, what's the minimum age for the Olympics? It's like 13 so, you know, those girls are like in the 13 to 16 range. That's your shot, man. You're not going to start an Olympics level career at, at 25. You're not going to start. If you already have one going, that's one thing. But, you know, if you missed your turn for some things in life, because some things in life, we miss our turn through 
disobedience, through unbelief, through whatever. So God is able to open a door for you. My pastor talked about that today too, that if you wandered in a wilderness for many years and it wasn't because you didn't believe, it was because of the knuckleheads you was attached to. When God opens a door, even if it's later in life, you can be just as strong, just as able to get your mountain and take your promised land because you believe God. God will enable you because of your faith. But some people do not believe God. They do not believe the promises of God. They're not willing to pay the price. Uh, and let me show you what that means practically. This is why I work so hard on talking about how following God is not magic. Following God is much more like farming or gardening. It's almost exactly like that. You have to find some good ground. You have to prepare the ground. You have to take out the rocks, the pebbles, the weeds, the bugs, the ants. You have to put in fresh, rich soil. You have to get some healthy seeds. You have to space the seeds apart. You have to bury them deep enough. You have to step back, let time, sunshine, and water, rain, or you got to water it, do their work. You got to wait till the sprout comes up. You got to protect the sprouts. You got to maybe fertilize it some more. And you got to protect it from bugs. And you got to help them sprouts get all the way up. And then you got to pick the harvest. And each one of them stalks of corn or flowers or whatever, each one of them not going to come up. And you got to find a good one. Following God is just like that. It's just like that. It's not magic. Okay? But what happens is some people don't understand that you you got to put your time in just with God like you do with anything else. You're not going to be a concert pianist if you don't practice. Do you understand that? You're not going to be an Olympics level gymnast unless you, as a child, get in that gym and begin to develop your gymnastics skills. Do you understand that? Well, you're not going to develop your faith and your walk with God if you don't do the same kinds of things. In other words, you have to come to the house of God on a regular basis. You have to be in the word of God every day. The Lord said when he was teaching us how to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Don't you eat some kind of meal every day unless, of course, you're fasting. But if you're not fasting, don't you eat? Don't you feed your physical body every day? You got to feed your spirit every day. Don't you know that? Don't you know that as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit? And just like you need a hot dog or a a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or some chips or an apple or some grapes. You need spiritual food every day. Give us this day our daily bread. He's not just talking about physical food. He's talking about that, but he's also talking about the spiritual nourishment we need from God. So you've got to come to church on a regular basis. You've got to come to the house of God. You've got to be in the word of God every day. You've got to spend time in prayer. Prayer has many components. Prayer in general is talking to God, but there are different kinds of prayer, okay? One kind of prayer is petition, where you're asking the Lord for things. Another kind of prayer is supplication. Supplication also blends into intercession. Intercession is when you are talking to God on behalf of someone else. Sometimes your child, sometimes your friend, sometimes a country, you're praying for the nation, you're interceding. Sometimes supplication is you're adding extra things to your prayer, like you told God one thing, and then you're supplicating, you're adding, and you're spending more time on that subject. Um, uh, another thing is there's uh, you can war in prayer and labor in prayer. Sometimes when you're in prayer, you have to speak to the heavenlies. When God releases things for you uh, from heaven, sometimes the devil comes to try to intercept, intercept them. And sometimes in your prayer life, you have to speak to the heavenlies, as, Dan, as the angel told Daniel, that from the day you fasted, God sent the answer, but the devil intercepted me on the way to you. And sometimes you have to speak to the heavenlies and ask God to release more angels and, and continue to speak the word of God. And that's another tool. This isn't prayer, but another tool is confession. You got to say what the word says. You got to keep saying it until you get it in your hand. You can't be confessing one thing and think God's word is going to work for you against what you're saying. Okay? So uh, you got to learn how to walk in the prophetic. You got to develop a prayer language. 
a prayer language where you speak in God not in your native tongue, but in a heavenly language that only you and God and the Holy Spirit understand. Okay, that's walking in the prophetic. You've got to learn how to do prophetic movement in worship, meaning you've got to learn how to give your body to God in worship. Many times God will have us do movements in our body that signify what's happening in the spirit. That's why many times in the warfare in the Old Testament, God would have them do something like break a picture, picture like stomp on the ground, like give a shout. When we do that in our bodies, it's mirroring what's happening in the spirit. So there's a lot to this walking with God thing. You got to pay tithes. Tithes are 10% off of any money you make. One dime out of every dollar you make. But then there's offerings. Offering is above your tithes. But then there's alms. Alms are gifts that you give to the poor. People that are uh, uh, less fortunate than you, uh, the homeless, people that don't have clothes, people that don't have food, people that need shelter, people that are sick in the hospital, you go bring them food, money, clothes. Those are called alms, alms for the poor in your finances. So there's a lot that you have to do to sow into God's kingdom. And as you sow into God's kingdom, remember I told you, it's just like farming. That's when you begin to reap the rewards because the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You have to diligently seek him. Then you get the reward. The Bible does not say that God is a rewarder of them that just sit on their rear end all day and don't do nothing. The Bible doesn't say that God is a rewarder of them that complain, does it? That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says it's when you diligently seek God that you get rewarded. So that's why I can't stress to you enough in this message about fatness that just because God is going to send you an increase in your finances, an increase in your thought life or your self-esteem or better emotions or an increase in your health or an increase in your career, you got to do your part. You got to let go of anything that's holding you back at them old levels and you've got to learn how to navigate on a new level. you got to learn what to do with money. you got to learn how to take care of your body. you got to learn how to pick better relationships and close out negative people. You have a part to play. You understand? But when, when God does his part, when he does the God stuff, and when we do our part, when we do the us stuff, that's how we get the fullness. That's how we get the increase. And God is saying he's moving us into a season where he's going to begin to do that. But for us to reap that harvest, we've got to do our part too. Then the yoke, then the yoke gets broken off. And, in, and like I say every week, I'm doing what I'm telling you to do. For example, last week, I fasted more than I normally do. I didn't eat. And, uh, and then what I did was I cut uh, my calories. I didn't eat as much and I didn't eat as many meals. And I started losing some weight and I felt better because I fasted more. I denied my flesh and didn't eat as much food, okay, because I'm moving in that level of health. So even when I claim by his stripes I'm healed, I'm doing things in the natural, okay? I'm doing things in the natural. I uh, just bought some fruit, got some oats. So uh, I just uh, had some spinach not too long ago, uh, made myself uh, some nice steamed spinach. So I'm doing things in the natural. So I'm, I'm eating some healthy food to help feed my body along with claiming the spiritual blessing of God. Do you see what I'm saying? Because all I tell you all the time, I'm not saying nothing that I'm not doing. I'm not teaching nothing that I'm not practicing. If I'm putting it out there, I'm doing it. Okay? So I'm not telling you to do anything that I'm not doing. So that's what I mean when I say the, the word of the Lord this week was fatness. And God is going to give us that increase, but we need to be prepared for that fatness. Do you know why people lose their money? People lose their money because they don't have a plan for success. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I could do a whole session just on that. It's the easiest thing in the world to plan for failure because when you fail, you learn your lesson, dust yourself up, dust yourself off, get up and try again. Take responsibility, learn your lesson, dust yourself off, get up, try again when you fail. What you going to do if you succeed? You ever think about that? Do you have a plan for that? Do you have a plan right now? If you got some extra money right now, what would you do with it? You got a plan for that? What if you met somebody tomorrow 
that was a potential spouse. Are you ready to be a spouse? Have you been spending your time getting ready to have a relationship? Do you see what I'm saying? So that's what I mean when I say God is moving. God is saying that if there are yokes on us, he's ready to increase us so much to that yoke gets broken off because of our fatness, our increase. But you got to know what to do with it. Okay. All right. So uh, if we have any prayer requests, put those on the screen. If not, I'm going to close this out in prayer. So uh, and before I do that, let me uh, remind you some things I said before. Several of you have asked me how you can support me. There's two ways you can support me. One way is you can donate money to my not-for-profit ministry through my PayPal link. So as soon as I post this video, I'm going to put my PayPal link on my Facebook page and on my Twitter account. My Twitter is PDTSOTC. That stands for Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. PDTSOTC. I'm going to put that link up there. I don't know if I can put a link on Periscope or not. I don't think so. But I'm going to put it on my Twitter and I'm going to put it on my Facebook page. So you can donate to my not-for-profit ministry and those donations are tax deductible. Or you can support me by uh, buying my music. And I'll put some links up there for my music. I'm getting some more stuff on iTunes. But those are the two ways you can support me. So thank you, those of you that asked me. Thank you for asking and thank you in advance for your support. Uh, this Thursday, I'm doing uh, my teaching on No More Genies because I teach the second Thursday of every month. And so, you know, like I showed you a little bit here, that No More Genies things is, is a more extensive teaching. So I need more time. Facebook page, the same name as your Periscope. Uh, Periscope should be Prophet David Taylor. My Facebook page is Prophet David Taylor, yes. But here's how to find me. Uh, do hashtag PDT. That's the quickest way to find me on social media because I hashtag everything I do with the hashtag PDT for Prophet David Taylor. So that's always the fastest way to find me anywhere on social media. Hashtag PDT. But yes, it's Prophet David Taylor on Facebook and Prophet David Taylor and Prophet David Taylor too, I think, on Periscope. But I'm pretty sure it's Prophet David Taylor. And I know it's the same picture too. So, okay, great. Thank you. So, um, so I'm going to be teaching Thursday on No More Genies where we get into more extensive teaching about how to break out a genie concept. And I just explained a little bit of you of it to you there where we've been taught that it's all up to God and that's not what the Bible teaches. That's never been true. God does his part, but we have to do our part. So I'll go into that. Uh, so I'm going to be teaching this Thursday at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. I'm going to be live on Facebook Live and Periscope. If you can't catch it live, you can always watch the replay. If you want to look that up, look up hashtag NMG. Hashtag NMG, that stands for No More Genies. Okay? And then I'm going to be back next time, uh, next week, next Sunday, at my regular time, uh, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live and Periscope. All right? So, uh, no prayer requests. So, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I say it all the time, it's my honor and my privilege to be used of God. It's an honor to carry the word of God. It's an honor for God to use you. So it's my honor and my privilege to come to you in this capacity. And thank, thank you for tuning in and praise God for you. All right? Well, God bless you, man. I thank you so much. God, we thank you. We just thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your promise. We thank you that your promise is that even if we're being chastised, even if we have been corrected by you because of our disobedience, oh God, that that will come to an end and that you will increase us again, that you will, that once we get right with you, that we get, as we move into obedience, as you have commanded, oh God, you will give us increase, you will give us fatness, you will give us oil, Lord, you will make us so increased and so rich and so lavish that yokes are going to start to be broken off, oh God. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the breaking of the yoke, Lord, I I authorize and release the fatness to come into the lives of all those that are listening and those that believe. As you have released it on heaven, oh God, we agree. Because you said whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. So I loose a spirit of fatness on all the saints that believe. I loose a spirit of the oil of lavishness. I loose and release a spirit in the name of Jesus of the increase you have released from heaven on us, oh God. And I also ask for a spirit of wisdom. So that as the increase comes, we know what to do with it so we can increase to the fullest potential and break off every yoke. 
so we can break off sickness, break off bad relationships, break off debt, break off negative naysayers, oh God, and break off unbelief. So we thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you for your written word, the logos. We thank you for your living word, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for access to your presence by faith because of the blood of the Son. We thank you and we give you glory. And we're going to go forward and enjoy our increase with wisdom because of your goodness towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. And again, uh, I talked about uh, support, and then I'll be here Thursday night, and I'll be here next Sunday. God bless you. Have a blessed week, and get ready to walk in that increase.